Okay, we're going to end this morning um, with the last presentation. And it's such a pleasure to present the next student. I, I didn't know Max before this year. I would see him going around, you know, because he's very tall and big, and he always brings this face around. And, and uh, I, I got to know him this uh, September when he started attending the Institute. And I immediately saw what a special person he is um, behind that big beard. And uh, <laughs> is really one of the most uh, fun-loving person so open and uh, and such a part of this community and i know everybody in school everybody in the global special relationship with you and i really really enjoy getting to know what a great person and musician you are so i'm super excited to uh hear your presentation again and i would like to um have everybody welcome you max ridley Uh, Alan Chase has been working as his advisor, and again, Susan in the panel. Thank you. Max. Thank you so much, Marco. And uh, I just want to say um, congratulations, everybody. You guys, all your projects and hearing them and seeing them has been a real pleasure and inspiration. So thanks. Uh, so uh, my project was an attempt to um, look at and my f one of my favorite things in life other than music, which is science fiction, and uh, write music for some of my favorite uh, works of science fiction, as well, and as well as uh, use some science fiction themes in the process of this, uh, this music, this ju uh, journey, because one, one of the things I love so much about music, especially improvised music, is if you're in the present moment, you're looking, you know, you're you're constantly you're looking at the whole, the whole the whole picture. You're constantly looking back, like so. What 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 has come before? What what's gone on so far? Uh, you know, here's where we are now. What's needed to further the music to to make it go forward, moving forward? Um, and that's kind of what, to me, what science fiction is as well. It's 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 someone writing where we are or where they were right then looking back at science which is there and maybe fiction is setting up a story and then moving forward because oftentimes these things are in the future so that's a concept I like very much um, so the I didn't want to go too obvious with I didn't want to be too obvious about it like to, to uh, lots of electric instruments and synthesis and that, that kind of thing, which using technology, because th that would be very, like, that's obviously the future if you think about where we're going in technology and everything. So I, I, I didn't want to per se, so I, I put together um, a very, with a very specific group in mind, uh, instrumentation. Uh, so just as we have a string quartet or a jazz piano trio, or a jazz quintet with piano, uh, drums, bass, and most of the time, two horns. Uh, I wanted to put together something that could be a projection of what a future ensemble could look, or what a future ensemble, what a normal s setup like that could look like in the future. Um, so I had, I wrote for, in this picture you don't see them all, because not everybody could make, make it, but you could see, um, had uh, two bass clarinets, um, two trumpets, uh, myself, and a tap dancer. Um, and uh, the reason for that is, if anybody's familiar with uh, steampunk or retro retrofuturism, uh, I really like the visuals of that. Uh, it's like old technology, uh, usually Victorian or Old West kind of stuff, but in the future. So if you look at I don't know, like, I love the visuals of, 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 of dance and a tap dancer, uh, also the way he sounds, but we'll get to that later. Um, if you look at, like, a, there's these tubes and pipes and you put air through them and you use these pistons that alter the fundamental, it, it, it's very uh, 
kind of steampunk looking device. Uh, as it's very silly and very beautiful. Um, and s same thing as clarinet. And why I had two of them, I had this idea of like uh, two sort of mechanical serpents like dancing together. Um, if, yeah, they look, if you see a very bass clarinet, it looks, I mean, you can see it here, a little bit of a, the top of it. It's very long and just very, like there's all these, I have no idea why they're there, um, but they look cool and <laughs> so. Um, a little bit about the background of the people in the, in the band, because that was very important, was the specific people, because uh, a lot of it was improvised and, and, and a lot of these people have very, yeah, a lot of improvised music together is, is everyone's voices coming together, having their own thing. So Aaron Gelb, uh, I asked him to do it. He was actually my camp counselor at Charles River Arts Camp uh, when I was like 12 years old. And I knew he played bass clarinet, so I, I asked him and I was excited he did that. I made it at the BGGI, Matt Stubbs. Um, he, played mostly, he played clarinet on one overdub, but mostly bass clarinet. Um, Ryan Easter, who's a, a, a friend of mine from Berkeley in undergrad, uh, he was, he's, he's a phenomenal trumpet player and also a uh, rapper and MC and poet. Uh, and the original thinking was to include um, spoken word and hip hop in this because I think that's a huge part of, you know, it's not going anywhere. So that's a huge part of, of music and in in moving forward into the future. Um, and uh, my friend Matt Hull, who I've been playing with since I was about 15, uh, he uses a lot of, so, so here's where the electronics kind of come in. He played trumpet and also did some live electronics as well as sampling and pedal board stuff. Uh, he was a deliberate choice because in addition to being a phenomenal um, trumpet player, it kind of brings in this sort of cyborg element because I, like, I, I love uh, some electronic music. I don't know that much about it, but what's more interesting to me is incorporating uh, mechanical material with organic material, like a, like a cyborg. So that was kind of, he, he would sample the band and do stuff like that, which you'll hear. Um, and Ian Berg, who was a tap dancer, um, I met him. He, we've been collaborating together for a long time. Um, and about a little bit about him is he, he uh, and the reason for using tap dance in this is, is his dance company, Subject Matter, the local dance company. Uh, we talked at great length about jazz dance uh, and their sort of their lineage together, um, and how uh, for what for one reason or another in the '60s when a lot of things started to change in the music in American improvised music, uh, for one reason or another. Tap dance, the, maybe the grand. He's, some of the grandmasters were getting older and, and retiring, but it didn't become as much a part of of that particular music movement of jazz. For whatever reason, um, the avant-garde, improvised, whatever you call it, um, free. And he's he's going back now and sort of filling in as a projection, like what would have happened, what could have happened if 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 that were the case. Um, and it, again, it's the looking back and looking ahead sort of simultaneously to reference where you are in the moment. Um, yeah. And also, so I'd like to start the musical examples with sort of starting, beginning with the end. Uh, the last thing we recorded after, you know, the, the, the very last segment of the last day of recording, uh, I brought in um, Vasilis Costas and Nassim Alatrash, who are uh, classmates of mine at the Institute. Um, I kind of asked them the day before, really. Uh, I, I'd had the idea to do that on purpose. Um, I didn't tell the guys I, I, in, in my group about it. I didn't tell them about it uh, because they're coming with such a strong um, vocabulary from where they come from, which is different to 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 um, to, to. What's one of the most beautiful things to me about jazz is is wherever it goes, it, it brings in. Um, the local, it, it encourages bringing in the local ingredients, if you will. Um, so they, they came in and we, we just recorded, improvised together um, with, with the group that had been playing. 
I also I also booked a, a series at the Outpost like twice twice a month from from January leading up to the recording. So we had a series of gigs together uh, with with the uh, with band um, because I wanted to, to like or like have have the chance to play together in front of people and 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 kind of get that sound get a, get a sound together. Which uh, but Vasilius and I asked him to do one, but he couldn't do it. So. They were not part of uh, not part of that, and I, I wanted to record just an improvisation to sort of simulate two very distinct people, musical forms, whatever you want to call it, coming together and, and trying to have a conversation, like as if two life forms from different parts of the galaxy get together and try, kind of try to hash something out. So I'll play a little bit of that. It's about ten minutes long, so I won't play all of that, but. to a bunch of different areas, but that was that was a deliberate sort of unrehearsed meeting of people who've never played together from very distinct worlds. Uh, thanks. Um, so the first tune I wrote uh, f for this project was a, a tune called Ter Terry Kitchen Splat Splat. Uh, it's for um, Kurt Vonnegut, who, when I was in the eighth grade, uh, kind of made me love reading again. I had a teacher who uh, suggested him to me, and so he's 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 this particular. It's a, a from a book called Bluebeard that he wrote. It's not a science fiction book, but he's known for writing a lot of works of science fiction. Um, it's about an abstract expressionist, uh, fictional abstract expressionist who who worked in the this kind of same community as as Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko, um, who. Uh, He's the best friend of the main character of the book, who, who he paints with a paint gun, and he ends up killing himself. Uh, so this, the way I wrote this, is a structured chance composition. Uh, there's a there's a bass line that that continues the whole time. It starts out uh, sort of lopsided, like it's a big seven, but this, that just feels like a big circle. And then it comes into just straight four kind of backbeat. And there's three main uh, rhythmic ideas. Uh, there's kind of three main contours. That one. That one and that one, uh, and I, I could uh, I could have written it all in X notation, but what I decided to do was uh, within you know I stretched them out or, or shrunk them or repeated some. Uh, I would just put in notes in finale, like you, t two notes. So there's 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 two distinct voices uh, at random, um, like like uh, throwing paint or just sort of. So it's a, the skeleton is there, but what who the person is is kind of up to. And the instructions for because there's f there's two bass clarinets and two trumpets playing the melody, so there's four voices. And the instructions where you can aim for those notes and hit them if you want, shoot them, undershoot them. That's that's fine. Um, so this is kind of what that ended up sounding like. Oh, and it also starts with a bass clarinet. There's uh, a series of duos on here. There's trumpet duo, bass clarinet duo, and me and the tap dancer playing a duo. Um, uh, this one starts with a with the bass clarinet duo. All that. Oh, God.
Other trumpet player pointing his mic at the trumpet player who's soloing. Uh, I didn't know he was going to do that, so he improvised some of those synthetic effects uh, kind of at will. Um, so that, that was interesting. Yeah, I'm glad he did that. Um, that's that tune. Um, uh, this next one is. Uh, ballad I wrote for a short story by um, Kir Bulyachev, who's a Soviet-era um, science fiction writer, uh, about the first uh, faster than light speed travel uh, mission for, from Russian, uh, from the Soviet space, whatever their version of NASA is. Um, they get, so they, they, they go all the way out looking for life, realizing Knowing that because of the theory of relativity, uh, traveling faster than light, seven years will have passed for them, but something like 100 or 80, I'm not quite sure exactly, will have passed on Earth. Uh, so if they do return, uh, everyone they've ever known uh, will be dead. Um, so it's very sort of bittersweet, and most, it starts out mostly bitter. They haven't, they're in the middle of their mission. They haven't found much. Um, so this is... Oh, and also uh, the trumpet player set a loop to kind of. You, 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 you.
this this one. Uh, so this one's called, well, it was originally called The Prime Directive, which is a reference to my favorite TV show of all time, Star Trek. Um, but Dave Holland has a tune called Prime Directive, so I changed it. Um, this tune's called Tanagra. Uh, it's a trumpet duo, which I am naming Darmuk and Jalad, which is a reference to a specific episode, uh, this episode actually, about uh, the Enterprise coming into contact with people that can't, uh, a race of people who they can't communicate with and they can't figure out why. Uh, the universal translator doesn't work. Uh, so they're trying to figure out, they're both they're trying to figure out this way. So it's like a call and response. Uh, it still works. So it's a, a call and response um, idea, and then the soul is is is, is trying to figure figure something out. Part of part of the, uh, the the sort of the final music oh geez uh, the final musical component of this was uh, I, I wanted to use like I said with with uh, with um, Ryan Easter the, one of the drum players who's also a phenomenal rapper uh, use some elements of of hip hop and music that people know also rock and roll we didn't really get a chance to dis sit down and discuss the what what to use for the hip I mean moving forward we're going to with this group can incorporate more of that, but so to we the idea was to bring in sort of because I think moving forward into into the future of, of jazz improvised music whatever you want to call it, um, just like John Coltrane would take my favorite things, which was in theaters at the time, um, and sort of use that melody as as a vehicle for improvisation. You, you would you would your ear. Driven, like the average listener would be invited in like, oh, I know that, I saw that movie. And then, you know, take off from there. Uh, but they're with you because you invite them in with a, with a recognized melody. Uh, so that was the reason for including uh, two of these sort of rock and roll standards, if you will. Um, uh, Where Is My Mind by the Pixies, which uh, if you don't know, is in the end of the movie Fight Club. Uh, and the National Anthem by Radiohead, which Radiohead... Uh, one of the hardest parts about playing pop music that people know now is that it's not as harmonically, there's not as much meat there as the Great American Songbook had and had. Uh, and Radi Radiohead's got a lot of kind of meat going on, I think. So that's why a lot of a lot of a lot of jazz musicians will use them for for vehicles of improvisation. Uh, and this is this is um, so again looking backwards and forwards at the same time. Uh, and this, so this is the version of the Pixie song. This is short.
Yeah, so uh, thanks for my friend Ryan, who this is a rough mix. He's been helping me mix this. He's also my producer. Adam Weiss, uh, Mix One. Alan Chase, my advisor, has been really helpful. Susan Hagen, who's my bass teacher and uh, committee member. Uh, Marco, Danilo, Camille, all the BGGI faculty, and, and also all of you guys, uh, class of 2017. So thank you. Congratulations, Max. Who would like to start? Nice job. Thanks. Good, really great. A um, few things that stood out to me. I thought it was actually really well thought out and planned, um, th especially that you have a band performing together on a regular basis starting back in January. So important, especially where you're doing a lot of improv, to be able to communicate and be comfortable reading each other. But anytime you've got like a big recording coming up, it's a smart thing to do. I think that was really a very good idea. and I glad that you did that. Um, I would love in the future to see like a video of the, of the group performing together because I think such cool instrumentation and to see the tap dancer. You know, again, it is, it's retro and bringing it now and the future. I think that'd be really cool. Um, I loved in the, the, I was the first to find you, the radar blips. That was like, that really got me. Like I got chills, especially during the pizzicato bass solo. You know, it was happening earlier in the tune, as you know, and I noticed it was cool, but then when it was just everyone else dropped out and it was you and the radar, it was really like powerful. I got chills. I really <laughs> liked that. I thought that was very cool. And nice just on a bass side, Arco and vibrato. Nice. Well done. I liked All that. <laughs> no, that's you. You're doing the work. Um, I also liked, in one of them, you had like um, a stereo recording effect where I could hear the trumpet on the left and then the bass clarinet on the right. It, those little details like that make such a difference, you know? And it, it was a moment where I almost felt like it was live because I could hear, you know, playing in a symphony orchestra, I, I hear that left and right thing a lot, and I really liked hearing that. But I thought you did a great job, and um, it was really cool, you know, seeing the inspiration come to life in the music. I thought you did a great job. Congratulations, Max. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, very interesting music. Uh, I, I love, uh, it you know, took me different places uh, with my imagination and I think uh, that's what music should do. So thank you for that and thank you for including the tap. It, um, it's something that I mean, people like you said, you know, are, are doing and it's trying. It's coming back, but uh, not enough. So thank you for bringing that to the forefront. I'm going to look up subject matter. All right. Is the whole dance company tap or? It's they're all they're all um, they're all tap dancers. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. That's cool. Um, and rabbittooth.com is that your website or? Oh no, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> so I, that's uh, that's where I found this picture. Oh, from. I see. I'm sorry. sorry. I thought that was related <laughs> to the project. I was no, like, oh, that's, that's cool. The, that's the Beatles, but with the Star Star Wars Cantina band heads. No, yeah. that yeah. No. Sorry, I see. I, I see. should have done a better job editing. No, no. Um, so what, what my biggest question is: what your future plans are with this project? Is it to perform with this band? I mean, do you see it? Uh, do you see anything else other than performance or what is yeah it, it's it's been actually really great for me to sort of as an as a sort of kick in the butt to like write more um so definitely that to keep writing um I, we, we all play together in, in various settings i mean me and ian we do a lot of work together with a group i lead then his, his our co-lead and then his um his tap dance company so i guess sort of that's the main thing like like because i Sort of was like obsessed with Fred Astaire as a kid, so that's kind of my fixation with tap dance. But he's all he also really is kind of obsessed with like Ornette Coleman and and that kind of modern improvised vocabulary. Um, and yeah, I get to keep 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 uh, playing together and, and working on sort of leading a group because it was it's it's not very easy for me. Uh, so yeah, 
I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly what yet, but, but definitely more. And, and another question would be, what are the lessons that you've learned from all of the science fiction that you're so attracted to? And how are you putting that in, in your life like, or in your music? Um, I guess, so things are pretty weird right now, just in, in the world in general. So I, 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 that's why I gravitate towards so much towards Star Trek. Uh, it's sort of this, nothing's perfect, but it's this, it's this picture of, of if we made it, if, you know, if, if our morals manage to catch up with our technology I and we don't blow ourselves up in the process, like it's this, 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 not perfect, but we're, we're getting, we're getting there. So I, th I think I, I enjoy that a lot in, in, in too, because it's not as, you know, as you sit down to type a story, it's not as, um, concrete's not the word, but it's not as like, it's a little more abstract than that, but it's, it's sort of creating this space, this picture, this what story, whatever you want to call it, that it's, it's what you want, sort of what you would hope to see in, in, in it's, well, it's hard to say because it's not, yeah, again, it's not, there's no definite meaning that you know, everyone has their own meaning, but you can cr create this fantasy place where things aren't so bad, I guess. Great, and the only uh, advice I would give you in the, for the future is to make your audio clips edited, you know, ahead of yeah, time. Yeah. So that um, you can easily skip, you know, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but you know that. that. <laughs> okay, c congratulations. Thank you. Um, Max, um, well, it, it, something happens to me interesting when, when you were doing the presentation after that drawing, the, uh, that what was that instrument you had playing? It was, th that were playing the G and the kit. Just oh, uh, that, was, uh, that was the trumpet, um, but with a looper pedal. Yeah. So it, it with a little bit of, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, ring modulator and a reverb kind of thing on that, it. That was really interesting. The, the, the and then when it finished, I, when you started talking, I kept hearing that. There's something on your tone and that, that note and that thing and the, that I kept hearing in my mind. And I, I thought, where am I right now? So there was something unique about that, that, um, that moment for me. And th there is that, that um, the science fiction aspect of, um, I, I love the music. I think you can go more sci science fiction than me. I mean, way deeper on it. Let's yeah. go for it. I mean, if we're gonna go for it, I, I think there's a quality to your music that is, it's really, it's like, uh, even though it's science fiction there, I hear hope. There's a quality that, that is very, very beautiful. And especially you, in that piece, you really, it came, it came through really strong for me. Um, I would I would recommend at the beginning just to get d down a little bit down to the points you're gonna develop a little faster, and um, the tap dancing is a great idea, but I almost feel like this this um, that that itself is a he heavy. I mean, you you're tapping into heavy topics that could could potentially take your you know they, they're they're gonna. I would like to see it develop more. Like when you talk about why is that out of the music. And why we know including more. I mean, me myself was it, it, and experimented with tap dancers, see how high it is in the studio. You know, after I put a session together, I had to cancel that track because it was really challenging. I don't know if you remember that there. Um, and then, and then all the the the. I would I would love for you to continue that composition, man. I never heard your songs, and they're beautiful. And. Um, I will, I will exp you know, encourage you to continue. Like you have a lot to give, Mac. You have a lot to do for the safeness of society and the goodness of the world. And you, you have a very unique, like your last name, Ridley. You know, that's a Japanese. What did I remember that Metro Vision, uh, Metro Works? It's like the uh, Metro series of Nintendo. And the Ridley is oh, the yeah. bad guy. The bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. So you may Metroid. be. You, yeah, you may be deceiving us, but you can't deceive me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. 
So I would encourage, I, I just, man, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. No apologies. Go for it. Congratulations. That's been amazing to see how much you've grown. Your bass playing. And, you know, it's got this thing. You know, it's just incredible. You have the science fiction, but you also have the, the primitive, you know, like the, the tribal, <laughs> you know, the earth and the... So we're, we are waiting for, for, for that science fiction to, to keep painting um, the hope that we need in, in, in our life right now. Thank you, Max. Thanks, Ray. Congratulations, Max, on the final results. I think the music itself is really great. And um, I think my feeling is the, the fairly elaborate science fiction inspiration, the, you know, the, all the details of why you put this together, which are quite complex, you know, the instrumentation, the personalities, the uh, history you have with the individuals, the inspiration from these specific works and specific in each, each uh, thing that you reference in the titles and so on. Um, in a way, they, they're facilitating a process for you, like they're, they're freeing you to make wildly creative music, you know, that's really coming from your sonic imagination. And so it's, it works and, and um, focusing on it in the presentation, so it, we aren't here getting to hear big segments of the music, but I've gotten to hear more of it in our meetings and I encourage everybody to listen to it all the way through because you have a great ensemble there, a great sense of form and time that the pieces develop really well. They're quite creative and out there and each one is different. You know, the free improvisations worked really well that you played me as well as the uh, pieces that have a compositional element. Um, I feel like, you know, I'd like to have like a day panel discussion about inspiration and things like that, you know, but I think about a lot about Sun Ra and a little bit about Wayne Shorter and other people in jazz history who've been inspired by science fiction and found it an element of something freeing and inspiring to them to be more imaginative, you know, to connect with that. Yeah, and I think that's part of what you're doing here, you know. The, sometimes the concepts like the like instruments, the pairs of bass clarinets and trumpets, but yet they're very different people and very different players. So there's this kind of weird stereo thing going on in the band. And then the, the tap dance, which is so unusual. And um, those things could have been conceptual things that may or may not have worked, but they actually worked really great. I went to hear your band once and, and in the recording in particular, I think, especially once you mixed it better, it really is effective. One thing I don't think we heard in this presentation is uh, the rhythmic complexity that the tap dancer sometimes brings to the pieces. Yeah. I don't think we heard, there's some that are quite polyrhythmic and both in, the fr in a free time kind of sense and also some metric stuff that's a little more dry and uh, complex. And worked really well, and uh, I think you pulled that off in the studio, which is uh, really hard to do. I mean, it's a very ambitious, complex project. I'm talking a lot and not asking a question. Um, I, I agree with Danilo that it shows like a liberated imagination and a real adventure spirit, and I think there's a, I can just for to sort of feel like what the next step is, like go for it and bring it out there, you know? bring it to people out beyond your circle of like-minded friends and present it in a big way because it's, and free yourself, like, go for it, you know? <laughs> That's what you said, right? I, I agree, go for it. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. Congratulations, Mike Sridley. <laughs> Wonderful.